Today, we're going to be looking at the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Hey there, I'm Alexander Griffin, owner, CEO, and creative director of Dream Corridor Productions. As you heard in the intro, we're going to be taking a look at the one and only Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, a beast of a camera. So let's get right into it. Blackmagic Design boasts these features and more in the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and cameras within the Pocket Cinema lineup have been used on major films within the past 10 years, including, but not limited to, Logan, Don't Breathe, Jason Bourne, and Avengers Age of Ultron. So when I say it's a beast of a camera, I am not exaggerating. Now this camera is much more powerful than other consumer cameras and even some prosumer cameras. So let's take a look into the features of this thing. This is the user interface that appears when you look at the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K screen. So let's say I wanted to change my frames per second. So I can just click on frames per second. And if I want to go all the way to 60, I could do that. You have variable frame rates that you can choose here, as well as if you wanted to change your shutter speed to maybe a 96th or a 24th, depending on how much motion blur you would like in the shot. Let's look at the ISO, same thing. You just go across the slider or you pick some of the presets. Same with the white balance, depending on the time of day or the setting that you're in, as well as the tint. So if we go into this button right on the end here, we have a lot of options to be able to choose from here. So we can shoot for video, external video or film. We can change the sensor area from 4K to HD, I believe it is. 24 frames per second for the project frame rate. And then you can record for certain type of media device. Now here's where you get to change your settings for what you record. So here we have Blackmagic RAW and ProRes. So we can switch between the two if we want to, and we can change between the different resolutions. So here we are at DCI 4K, but if we wanted to go all the way to 1080, we could do that as well. So here we are on the monitor tab. So if we wanted to look at certain aspects of the shot, some things that the camera will be able to help us out with are focus assists, zebra lines, and frame guides, just as a few examples, especially if you wanted to choose to the HDMI port or the LCD screen, depending on if you have an HDMI monitor attached. So now we're gonna take a look at the audio, all right? So as you can see, the camera is picking up my voice talking right into the onboard monitors inside the camera. But if you really wanted to, you could plug in an external microphone through the mini XLR port or the 3.5 millimeter jack. And if you had an XLR microphone, you could turn on the phantom power, which provides power to the microphone itself. Moving on to setup, you can certainly change the date and time and you can go between shutter angle and shutter speed, as well as the language and image stabilization can set the function buttons for whatever you want. Right now, one of the function buttons applies a LUT to the camera. It doesn't apply it to the actual footage, but it applies a LUT to the camera. So you get to see a preview of what a LUT could look like in post. And depending on which button you choose, we'll toggle another part of the camera. If you wanted to create some presets, you could certainly import them into the camera. I don't have any of those right now, but if that's what you would like to do, you can certainly do that. Same thing with LUTs. You can choose which LUT you want, or if you preset and add some of those to your camera, you can do that as well. Now, a cool feature about this camera is that it records in what is called Blackmagic RAW. Essentially, what RAW means is that when you have the footage already shot, you can take it into post-production and change aspects of the shot that you might not be able to change with a normal camera. For example, you can change ISO, white balance, and other aspects in post-production. Now, how cool is that? Take a look at some of the footage I shot for my recent short film, Omniscient, for example. The color grading is matrixy and green tinted with a hint of artificiality. The way I could get this color profile to stand out so vividly and distinctly is through shooting Blackmagic RAW files. Here's a comparison of the basketball hoop. First in RAW, and then with the Lumetri presets I added in Premiere Pro. Looking at both in a side-by-side -side comparison, it may seem odd that raw footage is better to work with, but in truth, it gives you an infinity of possibilities in post-production when working with color and LUTs. Now, this is an important thing to know about this camera. It has an active micro four thirds lens mount, which means it'll really only accept micro four thirds lenses. But right now I'm using a Canon EFS lens, 18 to 55 millimeter, by the way. So how am I able to use this EFS lens 
with this Micro Four Thirds camera, well, with a smart adapter from Metabones. And this, my friends, is the Metabones smart adapter for Canon EF lenses to Micro Four Thirds cameras. So the cool thing about this is I can use both of my lenses, both the EF and the EFS lenses with this adapter and it is pretty darn reliable. So you've seen what this camera can do in a short film, but also with a talking head. Let's look at some fireworks. Now that is cool. Well, that about does it for the basics of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and comment down below. Also, please hit subscribe and hit the gray bell icon so you get notified whenever Dream Quarter Productions posts a new video. Again, thank you very much for watching. My name is Alexander Griffin, and I will see you next time.